If a ball is thrown vertically upward from the roof of a 32-foot building with a velocity of 48 feet per second, its height after t seconds is given by the function s of t equals 32 plus 48t minus 16t squared. For part A, we want to find the maximum height that the ball reaches, and part B wants the velocity when the ball hits the ground. So we've been given this mathematical model and I always think it's a good idea to start by identifying your variables. So we have an input of t. In this case, it says that t is measured in seconds. And then the output, which is s of t, s of t is going to represent the height, the height of the ball. And since it looks like we're dealing with a measurement of a 32-foot building and the velocity is 48 feet per second initially, that allows us to know that the height is measured in feet. So I always start with a variable key. So t is going to be the number of seconds that the ball is in the air. And then s of t, or just s, is going to be the height of the ball measured in feet. And then I like to also take a look at what the graph actually looks like. And this is one that hopefully we don't need our graphing calculators for because we see that it is a degree 2 polynomial and we have a negative 16t squared, so we know that graphically, this is going to be a parabola that opens down. So we're just gonna sketch a little, a little graph, nothing too fancy. And we also know that the, the y-intercept, in other words, when t equals zero, we get 32, and that's gonna represent that initial height, the building was 32 feet tall, and we were throwing that ball up off of the roof of this building, straight up vertically. So if it is a parabola that opens down, we're gonna have a shape something like this. And of course, there would be more to the parabola over here, but negative time does not really make sense in this context. And the graph helps to guide you for part A, because part A is asking for the maximum height that the ball reaches. So the maximum height is going to be found here, and this is at the vertex of the parabola. So if we were in a college algebra class, we could actually answer this question without any calculus because there is an actual formula that gets you the x value of the vertex of a parabola. And that formula is negative b over 2a. So you could actually do part a without any calculus knowledge if you remembered the negative b over 2a formula. But using a little bit of calculus, we could also do this quite easily if we think about the slope of the tangent line. Because at the maximum, the slope of the tangent line is going to be zero because the tangent line is going to be horizontal. So that means if we compute the derivative of our height function, and if we find where that derivative is equal to zero, then we will have found the time, which is down here, this time, when the ball reaches its maximum. So let's start by computing our derivative, s prime of t. So the derivative of 32 is just zero, that's a constant. The derivative of positive 48t is 48. And then the derivative of negative 16t squared is negative 32t. Remember that's because the exponent is gonna come in front and get multiplied by the negative 16. And then we subtract one from our exponent. That's the power rule. So we want to find out where the derivative is equal to zero. So we're setting the derivative equal to zero and that allows us to solve for time. So subtracting 48 and then dividing by negative 32. So we'll have negative 48 divided by negative 32, which will give us 1.5. Now remember, this is a t value, and t was measured in seconds. So this is going to be the time that the ball reaches the maximum height. So back to my picture, so we can visualize. We now have the question mark, and we know that this is going to be 1.5. But question A asks, what is the maximum height? So we don't actually want the, the x value or the t value, but rather we want the, the output, we want the y value, or in this case, that would be the, the s value, the actual height. So imagine that you're coming over to the y axis. Here we go, 
over to the y-axis and we're wondering what is the corresponding y value. So that's just a matter of substituting 1.5 back into the original height function so we can get the height. So in other words, we're computing s of 1.5. Plugging 1.5 back into the original height function, which I don't require that you actually write down this work. I would expect you just to do this in your calculator, but I'm gonna put it here just to reinforce the fact that we're not plugging it back into the derivative. That would be kind of silly, because if we did plug 1.5 back into the derivative function, then we would get out zero. And remember, that means that the velocity is equal to zero, which is a whole nother way of, of approaching this, thinking about when the ball reaches that maximum height, there's that instant when it stops moving Therefore, the velocity would be zero. So that's another reason why we're setting the derivative equal to zero. So if we go ahead and substitute 1.5 into the height function, we should get 68. And again, units are really important. This was a height and we said that the S function was measured in feet. So we are going to reach a maximum height of 68 feet. That's our output when our input was 1.5. So that is our answer to part A. Now part B is asking for the velocity, so we're gonna use the derivative function. Now we've already done the derivative, so this is my velocity function right here. So we're gonna find the velocity when the ball hits the ground. So I'm going to rewrite my derivative function, but I'm actually gonna label it as V for velocity. So I recognize I've already done that. I've actually found my velocity function. But the problem is I don't know yet when the ball hits the ground. So looking back at our diagram, we need to think about when does the ball hit the ground? Where would you be on your, on your graph? So when the ball is hitting the ground, we're basically sitting here, meaning we're at a place where the height is equal to zero. If the ball is on the ground, then it doesn't have a height. The height is zero. So we need to figure out when the height is zero. So we're looking for a time. And that means we're not actually gonna use the velocity function quite yet. We have to kind of hold on to that and do that later. We're gonna go back and use the original position function way back here at the top. So the original position function was 32 plus 48t minus 16t squared. And we have to first find this x-intercept. We have to figure out when the height is zero, what time is it? At what time is the height zero? So we're solving for t, and we're substituting in zero for our height, which would be s of t. So this is basically a matter of us doing some algebra first before we use our velocity function to do the calculus portion. So remember, the equation that you are faced with here is a quadratic equation. So it's a good chance to do some serious review how to solve quadratic equations. You're first going to probably want to reorder this and put the negative 16 t squared first. So I'll reorder it. This is a trinomial. It has three terms. So we need to first see if it factors. And it looks indeed like we have a common factor of negative 16. So we'll factor out a negative 16, which will leave t squared minus 3t minus 2. And then we're going to see if this continues to factor. Now, if it didn't factor, then we would rely on the quadratic formula to solve for t. But I think we can get this one to factor if we do t minus 2. Oh, look at that. No, we cannot. If we did t minus 2 times t minus 1, we have to be careful because negative 2 times negative 1 would be positive 2. So initially, it was looking promising, the, the factoring part, but it's not looking like it is going to factor, so we are going to have to rely on quadratic formula here. Now, we're doing quadratic formula on the t squared minus 3t minus 2 portion. And the reason for that, the reason why you're, you're kind of ignoring that negative 16, two reasons, one, remember, there isn't a variable out here with the negative 16. It's not negative 16 t, so we're not going to get an extra solution from this negative 16. The other reason is if you were to just think about dividing both sides by negative 16, that negative 16 would completely divide out and you would be 
we left was 0 equals t squared minus 3t minus 2. So that's why you don't need to worry about that negative 16. And we're going to go ahead and do our quadratic formula, solving for t. So we have negative b, and our b value is negative 3, plus or minus the square root of b squared, again, negative 3 squared, minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is negative 2, all divided by 2 times a, a is 1. Now we simplify. So 3 plus or minus the square root, we have positive 9, and then negative 4 times negative 2 is positive 8. So it's looking like 3 plus or minus the square root of 17 divided by 2. Now these are the exact times. Those are exact answers. So grab your calculator, pause the video. Let's put this in the calculator and make sure you get the decimals as well. One answer seems to be approximately 3.56. And the other answer is approximately negative 0 0.56. Now remember, these are T values, these are times. So since time is an, in a number of seconds in this case, a negative value doesn't make sense. So we're gonna throw out that one solution and we will keep our, our time of 3.56 approximately. That's 3.56 seconds. And that value, we got that value by computing three plus the square root of 17 divided by two. Now let's go back to our graph for a second and just make sure that these values make sense. We were just finding the x-intercepts or the t-intercepts, and you can see that there definitely are going to be two places where this parabola intersects, the x-axis or the t-axis, and one certainly is going to be negative over here on the left, but we're only going to be keeping the one on the right. So this question mark we now know is about 3.5, 3.56 seconds. That is gonna be when the ball hits the ground. Now the question is asking, what's the velocity when the ball hits the ground? So now this is where we come back and use our velocity function. And so we will substitute in our value of 3.56. Now 3.56 is a rounded answer. So if we wanna be really precise about this, we will go ahead and actually substitute in the exact form. So the exact form was the three plus square root of 17 over two. So to be precise and only round one time in the problem, we're gonna substitute in three plus the square root of 17 divided by two. But of course, you'd be using your calculator to do that. And then that should give us an estimate for the velocity. This looks to be approximately negative 65.9 seven if I round to two decimal places. Now let's talk about why a negative makes sense. Graphically, a negative should make sense to you because if we look at the slope of the tangent line at that point where the ball hits the ground at the x-intercept, we can see the tangent line is very, very steep and has a negative slope. So the negative should make sense graphically. And the negative should also make sense in this context because the ball is on its way down. So we have that negative direction. So we would expect a negative velocity. And lastly, we wanna include units. So remember, when we're doing velocity, we're thinking about velocity as the change in the object's position over the change in time. And we said earlier that position was measured in feet and time was measured in seconds. So this would be a velocity of approximately negative 65.97 feet per second, which would be our answer for part B.